Greetings, everybody. Welcome back to the City Podcast. And for staying in truth to yourself, we are here to foster the necessary discussions of how to value the self and in the community. So today we have a new guest. And without further ado, I would like for him to introduce himself and you guys tune in and listen up. For sure. Hello. 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 My name is Kai. That's the name I go by these days. My name is Kyrence Mazik Holmes. Um, I'm a character, so to speak. Uh, so now if you told us your name and a little bit about yourself as a character, can you expand and talk more about yourself in terms of the type of character you are and uh, who you are as a person and the things that have kind of shaped you and molded you? Sure. So uh, I'm a character basically means uh, I'm very expressive. I'm a theater arts kind of person. I majored in theater arts in college. Um, I, I do community theater. I'm all about um, I'm all about self-expression. So whatever that could mean as far as singing, art, dancing, those are things that uh that drive me and fuel me. Getting other people to express themselves is also something I appreciate. Just to expand more in terms of your experience and how you became uh, interested in like the theater arts uh, field. Can you, uh, was there like an experience that led you to uh, being interested in that field? So I've field? always been, I mean, not not like for lack of a better word, I've always been entertaining um, or I've always tried to entertain folks or, or just been good at it. So uh, people have said like, since I was a kid, always singing and dancing in front of folks, uh, just giving them laughs, you know what I'm saying? Like, I guess I internalized that as a kid, like, you know, just thinking about it, just thinking about it. Uh, mm-hmm. But other than that, like really... It was freshman year of high school. I went into the ABC program. It was kind of like that freshman orientation program. Shout out Valley High, go Vikings. Yeah. Um, hey, go know, Vikings. We went to the theater and they really just like expanded my world. They showed me theater games to play. And I realized like, yo, I, I do not want to leave this building. This is the only reason. This is the only reason why I'm going to high school. Oh man, that's I remember at Valley. Yeah, it was a that's a interesting place to be, and especially when you decide to be in that field, you know, you have to learn how to really know your character and know yourself. So uh, that's that's really good that it started then. Um, so in, in terms of your journey so far uh, into figuring out what you uh, what you like to do and who you are, uh, do you have a biggest accomplishment that you've accomplished, um, and why is it your biggest accomplishment? Man. I've been thinking about this question, like accomplishing things. Uh, Most of my accomplishments, I feel like they're supposed to happen. Does that make sense? Like it's, it's an accomplishment, but it's like, it's supposed to happen. Like graduating high school was supposed to happen. Me. uh... Okay. I can say this. I guess my greatest accomplishment is me being brave (laughs) enough for me to live my own truth. And to explore what that means on a daily basis. I feel like I, I don't know, man. Like, I feel like I haven't accomplished much, even though I do things like I do things. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I feel like an accomplishment comes from a sense of pride. And I don't, I'm not yeah. really okay. like, prideful, like as far as things, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, on this on the city podcast, the platform is all about yourself and how you're staying true to yourself and how you're facilitating that in the community. And I feel like you yourself have done that uh, exceptionally well. Uh, can you kind of expand more on the different type of things that you kind of do within your community in terms of how uh, it ma- in terms of your pride? Like, what are the things that make you happy and make you proud to for be sure. who you so, are? Uh, I worked for Improve You Tomorrow, IYT the Brotherhood, the Brotherhood. A nonprofit organization, young men of color to and through college. Um, I was part of the first class. And so just, just seeing how far we've learned and grew about ourselves and, and our organization and our community, like just being a part of that, it was dope. Um, part of, part of like me interacting with IYT, I realized, um, cause I went to the university of the Pacific in Stockton. I realized that, um, a lot of the college students weren't really like getting the necessary mental help we needed as far as looking at our mental health and things so I voiced my opinion and as soon as I voiced my opinion it seemed like that next summer we had a camping trip man I missed them camping trips man mm-hmm. me too had to reminisce a little bit uh but yeah we we went on the camping trips and and it was the third trip and that was the mental health trip so I feel like I feel like a lot of me learning about myself and just to go back a little bit more um I use theater and I didn't know it in fre- at freshman year, but I, I've been using theater 
uh, for I'm gonna say the past 10 years, just to use it as a way to explore myself more, to, to live my truth. There's certain characters or certain things where it's like, yo, I understand where you're coming from. And, and with those characters, it's not necessarily like work, but characters whom you don't understand, um, it's definitely a lot of work to under, to, to see what they see, what they're doing and how they do it, et cetera, et cetera, like their motives and things. So I, I kind of use theater as a way of self-exploration and a way to explore others. And so um, mm-hmm. how I, how I use this in, in my community is like, now I'm teaching theater to kids. I'm teaching acting and I'm using, I'm using this model of self-exploration as a way for people to learn acting and a way for them to learn about themselves. So I've started, I've started like okay. doing little outreaching here and there as far as using my tools, but as a mentor for IYT straight up, like I, I was serving my community basically to try and create environments for them to be their truest self period okay um you touched a little bit about the mental health aspect and uh can you kind of expand upon uh that about the importance of mental fitness and what are kind of things uh necessary to have someone to have around you to ensure your mental fitness is like the best that it can be people don't even recognize how much like your mentality or mental fitness is so important people just look at uh i have to work this job to pay these bills so my kids can eat and sometimes they don't look at the deeper part so I feel uh like growing up there was always something missing and I think mental fitness Mm -hmm. was one of them things where it's like we're not even taking into account excuse me we're not even taking into account our our mentality um so please refresh what was the question okay no it's just I just wanted you to got uh, just kind of touch upon uh your experience when it comes to your own mental fitness and then how you've been able to facilitate that uh, within your community in terms of ensuring people have uh, the, the right resources around them uh, in terms of making sure their mental health is okay. Um, and just uh, as you touched upon, in terms of being a mentor for IIT, uh, for me, it's also been a great experience. It's uh, really challenged me to really find myself in terms of exploring um, the type of things I like, uh, the groups of people I want to surround myself with, um, it's really exposed me to also understanding like I was once in those shoes as those students and now I'm in a I'm in a position to like, OK, I see what they're doing and it's kind of my job and kind of I'm in a position of like, all right. So I did that before. This is what happened for me. I don't know if you should be able to do that because blah, blah, blah is going to happen. What you should probably do is this. And from my experience so far, it's kind of proven it's been a challenge, honestly, because it does challenge my own mental uh capability in terms of like all right me you know when i'm off the clock or on the clock i'm constantly thinking of how i can constantly improve not just the student but also improve myself so uh i'm really glad you touched upon that fact um can you kind of expand a little bit more in terms of your experience on the different types of things you've done in terms of the mental health field so um just just uh other than being a person with mental health i've explored my own self and uh the demons of darkness and the joys and the heights that people say. Um, I'm a part of this internship uh, through the Health Educational Health Education Council uh, called Peers Helping Peers. So I basically was just finished trained on how to be a mental health first responder. Um, I've I've read books, <laughs> Liars. and I know that's not like a mental health book, but basically, like I look at willpower as part of like the mental fitness. So I've looked at, I've mm-hmm. looked at, um, also what's the book called? You Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Yeah. So that, that okay. was, yeah, <laughs> I'm still reading that, but it, it's definitely got me, uh, like questioning if, if feelings, you know, like feelings, mm-hmm. if they're, if they're valid half the time, cause that's, that's one thing, uh, growing up, I was, I was always conscious of was feelings and if your feelings were hurt or, or, or anything like that, like if your feelings are hurt, is your mental health like in jeopardy? Is it, mm-hmm. is it, uh, yeah, basically like, yeah. So I know feelings are a part of it, but understanding feelings, whether or not you want to do something, like I feel like doing it, I don't feel like doing it. Well, what are you doing? So willpower, mental health is that's, that's yeah. Okay. And what kind of things do you do to uh, keep yourself uh, at 100%? Man, I'm going to be real. I don't even know when the last time I was at 100%, sir. But to keep myself, to keep myself oh, man. not falling apart, like I definitely uh, I isolate myself. 
Um, I mm-hmm. don't know how many people like <laughs> know me that are gonna hear this, but like I, I'm more of a social person. Um, and I really like going out and hanging out with folks, but I realized like most of that was like distracting. So recently, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna say like in the past year or two, I I've really been by myself. I've really been isolated and and not really reaching out and talking to folks. Social media is cool or whatever, but um, yeah, that's another thing. I stay away from. Well, I can't say I stay away from social media because uh, being an online entrepreneur, you kind of need to social media presence. So um, yeah, okay. I. Uh, Oh, and I just started exercising again. So I can say, like, exercising makes me feel better. Okay. Um, that's, man, that's that's also, that's also something I, I was uh, thinking about, too, for myself in terms of uh, what type of things I do to ensure that I stay at 100%. Uh, and I don't want to say, like, I'm all 100% all the time because I always feel like there's always some room to just always strive to, like, you know, be, be a little better than I was yesterday or be a little bit better than I was the last hour. Um, and the kind of things I've been trying to do is actually just, like you said, is sometimes isolation is not the worst thing to do. It's actually sometimes the best thing to do because you kind of have to, you're checking your own thoughts. You know, you're, you're sitting there, you're thinking about, all right, this is my experience in this. This is my reflection on this. Um, and one of the biggest things I can say from that is, you know, perseverance and reflection um, are two big components when it comes to just mental fitness and also making sure you have the right group around you. Would you say that's uh, something that's kind of important when it comes to um, your mental fitness? Most definitely. Like, I, I, like, straight up, whoever is around you, whoever is in your group, whoever is a part of your team, your squad, you, like birds of a feather flock together, you are soaking up their knowledge, what they're putting down, what they're not putting down, their nonverbal cues, like, period, all of that. So mm-hmm. wh- whoever is in your environment, that's who is who is acting upon you, period. And that's just given circumstances. And that's what I learned through theater. Like if anybody's on that stage, they they are a character and they are they are doing something and they are adding whatever it is, whether if it's silence or action. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's you hit it right on the money, man. Um, and you also touched upon your experience in terms of like uh, you becoming trained in the mental health field uh, with peers to peers program. Can you kind of expand on your experience in that program and the kind of things you kind of learned from it? Peers for Open Peers program was a great experience. Um, just just because of where we are now in the world, we're quarantined. It was online and through Zoom um, that that kind of took away, I'm going to say. But overall, from the learning, it didn't take away from how much I gained. I'm going to say, like, not being in person was tough uh, just because I wanted to see people. Yeah, what? Character, like, I, <laughs> I got to meet myself. Like, my, my uh, <laughs> what are they called? My ad-libs, my little catchphrases, my, um, I'm an experience. That's all I'm saying. And they was not getting a full car experience. I'm kind of sad about that. But, uh, <laughs> 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 so basically, man, like. I learned I learned things about like what was harming me that I didn't even know. So sometimes sometimes you're being affected by something and you don't even know what it is. And it's a it's an idea. It's a it's a theory or it's a it's a proven law. It's a fact like, yo, science, science says if you move this way, this is what's going to happen. So I was able to learn about substance abuse. I was able to learn about like depression and how to counteract that. Um, I was able to even get connected to all the resources around Sacramento. Like I know improve your tomorrow, but I didn't even realize like Sacramento got nonprofits. Uh, yeah, Sacramento got nonprofits out the ass. Like what? What? And and so yeah, there's a whole gold mine of resources out there. So man. so peers helping peers connected me to the resources. Peers helping peers connect me to young minds that look like me. One thing about IYT is like it's it serves young men. Although there's young ladies or, or, or um, people that don't identify as males or men uh, that mentor the students, like the students themselves is only are only males. So when I was in this program, I was able to be a part of a program that was for everybody. And so that was a cool experience, mm-hmm. too. Not just people that, you know, identify the same as me. So, yeah. Yeah. I really appreciated this. And I, I recommend to anybody listening or or etc. Join Peers Helping Peers looking to the Health Education Council. 
Okay, can you uh let them know uh like where can people find information about this for peers helping Man, peers? Uh <laughs> I'm be re- I don't know where the application is, but I'm gonna definitely send it out. It's gonna be in my um in my bio on Instagram. Like I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna promote it for sure. Okay. So you can follow me at Kai Two Sly K Y okay. the number two and then S L Y on IG. All social media really. But yeah. Okay. Well, uh, now to transition a little bit um, into a little bit more about yourself, um, you've touched upon the importance of mental fitness, the importance of mental health, the importance of having the right people around you, um, and the importance of, you know, finding the right resources to uh, elevate your um, your lifestyle, pretty much. Um, so this is a question out more for in terms of you as a person. Um, why do you feel uh, you are different from anybody else in this world? What is that one unique quality that you have that is just, wow, this is what makes me majestic? Yo, what is that? Uh, I just know I'm dope as fuck. Like, what makes me different? Mm-hmm. Uh, my level of love, my level of wisdom and understanding. Like, um, sometimes sometimes my my ability to, like, my pain threshold for emotional pain, physical pain, mm-hmm. like my struggle. Like, why am I different from everybody else? Because um I'm more of an idea. Like, like, yeah, I'm a human being and I'm a person, mm-hmm. but I'm developing like an idea of what Kai is. I'm developing how to like be the best, be the best self for self, for others. I feel like that's my mission. Mm-hmm. I, what I could say about that is that I actually agree. You're always uh, in a cheerful mood. It can be the most cloudy, rainy day, and you're just always there with the sun right on top to lighten up the day. So, yeah, man, that's that's a really important quality to have as a person is, you know, making sure you can always brighten Aww. people's days. Uh, as long as you're making sure your oh, self-care dude. is important. So I'm actually asking, yo, like, um, keep that up. it was actually keep interesting that. because um, – I feel like that was a coping mechanism, like always being happy and stuff. Like nobody's always happy, you know, but like, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, so um, school was always an escape. Like never, never was it for me to like, you know, how people go to school to learn and to like, okay, I'm going to do real well in this class. So it puts me into the next step for this class. It was not, it was not a means to an end for me. School was an escape from home. School was an escape from what I assumed was my mind, but it was just other people's ideas that I internalized. Mm-hmm. And so, like, when I went to school, mm-hmm. I'm kicking it with my friends. Like, I'm turned. You know what I'm saying? So that, and then, and then, um, mm-hmm. and then, like, moving into, like, work. Work is, it was, was an escape from life at one point. You know, so going into it, I, I mm-hmm. behaved a certain way. Like, I'm having fun. Like, all of this was fun. And then I realized, like, when I'm not having fun, I'm not acting this way. Like, it's the exact opposite. So almost, like, that's why that's why I'm talking about, the like, the character. Like, I felt like I was pretending sometimes. Although, although I, I, had, I had so much fun and I learned, but I feel like for me and going back to the environment and going back to, like, the people around you, like, for me, I really needed to be around positive people for me to be positive like yo i'm a mirror like i was just mirroring Mm. and sometimes don't get me wrong you got to throw something at somebody so they can throw it right back at you you know that's why that's why i come with the sunshine but definitely like it was a coping mechanism do you uh is there like any experiences that kind of led you into figuring that out for you um in terms of of it as a coping mechanism Um, for you when i stopped caring definitely and i was like yo like what am i doing like what's mm, actually happening okay. here mm. like i realized i was sacrificing okay. my needs and my wants like i wasn't taking care of myself but i was taking care of others mm. and what uh so what kind of steps did you kind of take to to reach into that point that you wanted to reach uh, to? i lost a lot i really did like um most most things most actually I don't even know if I want to say most things 
But there are certain things that happened in life that didn't go according to plan. And it hurt my feelings. It hurt my feelings mm. so bad to where I really didn't understand who I was. It hurt it hurt my spirit to be like, yo, I don't even you know, like suicide and 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 drug abuse and addiction, like dependency. You know what I'm saying? Like there there was mm-hmm. things that I faced that I just realized there wasn't this wasn't no way to live. So most of the coping strategies was I'm being nice to people so I can like basically go through so I can get through and things can go my way. Mm-hmm. So I ain't gotta worry about look, nobody wanna do something nobody someone doesn't want to do something because their feelings are hurt. So mm-hmm. um what happened? I was basically financially disqualified from University of the Pacific. Um I wasn't gonna take out like another large loan to continue to go there. I came back school I came back home to go to community college and I had to improvise another theater turn. You know, mm-hmm. so so for my feelings to get hurt, for me to feel like I had nothing and for it to be like constant rebuilding, constant destruction and rebuilding is what happens. Is mm. what happens for me to look at certain things and be like, yo, is it is this is this good enough to be a part of the inventory? Mm. And your experience so far, uh, you know, it, it does play a role into you coming to an understanding of who you are more. So with what you have experienced so far, have you do you have an understanding uh, of your the essence of your own existence? I'm going to be real. I'm very self-aware. I'm very self-conscious, but I have not created who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like I like I did not build or program whoever this person is. Um, I feel like I understand who Kyron's Bertram Mazik Holmes is. I feel like I know who that is but as far mm-hmm. as who he's about to be i feel like i've barely scratched the per- the the surface for real wow and there's still more like you said deconstruct and then build and it sounds like you're really right now really building uh more and more and i'm gonna just keep say keep it up man keep up the good work and for everybody out there that's listening um i hope they can kind of resonate with the experience that uh, even if you fall, you know, get back up and do it harder. So that's uh, it's really important, man. Um, so in terms of your experience in theater, I know you've uh, done a couple shows here and there and done a couple of things. Uh, do you have any works or any publications, projects or content that you feel proud of that you've done or like you feel like people need to know about that they man, don't know I don't, about? So the thing about theater, most of the time, if you're not paying to record it, you can't even record it. Like it's that's illegal. It's not illegal. Ooh, so okay. I don't really have a lot of stuff out there that people can go see. Uh, but I just mm-hmm. promote theater often. So whether or not you got an opportunity to do anything whether it's a whether it's a play it's a it's a reading it's improv night like go ahead and go for it um support your local theaters period but um yeah i mean i do i do musicals when i was in um when i was at uop i did high school musical i played zeke who, who who's the baker and he gets with sharpay at the end that was hella fun um I did mm. a very Potter sequel, which is like a like a spinoff of Harry Potter. I played Sirius Black, which is kind of funny because those who don't know, like I'm a black dude. So we made the joke like he's seriously black. Um, but yeah, like most of the things I've done was uh, like musicals. So I'm really into like singing and stuff like mm-hmm. that. Okay. Uh, what do you want to do, though, in terms of like, what, is there anything specific that you're trying to get to? You know, for example, I, most people who are here when in a theater, they say, oh, I want to go and, you know, perform yeah, in Broadway man. or I want to go and be a big time yeah. when we start in L.A. What's what is that? What is that one goal that you have for yourself when it comes to the theater um, at uh, world? At this point, like most of it is after you accomplish all that. Like my goal is to really have a theater like theater. I mean, like a summer camp. I'm gonna I'm go with that. Like, I really, mm. I, oh my God. yo, like, okay. my goal is to have a ranch and just, or, or some type of land that I'm able to take my, my community members and, and like an escape for real. Cause I grew up like watching the parent trap and that looks so cool to go to camp. Like, I've never been to camp before. So I wanna be able to take 
Man, that movie. Yeah, yeah my friends. That's a good movie. They they were able to go to Sly Park, and I never went to Sly Park. You know, so it's like, dang, I really missed out on some <laughs> things in childhood that I want to give to other people. So I'm, I'm gonna basically start a theater summer camp where I'm able to uh, uh, teach people how to self explore and to how to be a better theater or actor, whatever that may be, technical theater included. Okay. Um, for all you listeners out there um, that are interested in theater, this is a great conversation for you guys to listen into is that dream big and start building it for sure. towards that dream. And as Kai said, you know, his dream is to have his own theater productions and to make his yeah. own things. So keep up that work. And if you guys want to reach out to him, hey, you said, you what's your IG? Me at KY number two, S-L-Y, Kai two slide, baby. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and also, all you big time movie uh, people out there listening, make sure you guys reach out to my boy. He's coming up in the theater game. Soon going to be, uh, what is it? What's the awards that they give out? The Emmys? No, that's, uh, so the, the Emmys, Emmys is like TV. The Tonys is for, for theater. Okay. I see a Tony one day on hey, your desk sounds... named to you. Hey, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be coming your way, man. I accept that. Um, so now the next question uh, we have for you today is if you were to describe yourself in three words, what would those words be? <laughs> I was like, damn, nah. <laughs> um, I'm going to say, I'm going uh, to say real. I'm going to say uh Man, trying or or like determined. I'm gonna say that so like real determined and uh mm-hmm. real unorthodox or I'm gonna say eccentric. Gotta add, gotta add some of that weirdness okay. in there because it's a weird motherfucker right here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, what what made you say those things? Uh, what kind of things that have kind of shaped you to realize this is the this how I describe um, myself? Sometimes, sometimes being truthful or being real hurts people's feelings, and uh, I'm damn near mm-hmm. willing to break your feelings to be real. Sometimes, you know, so like that that's intense. You're the type of friend that that's the type Man. of friend people need. You don't need the ones that shoot the code. You need the ones that are going to keep it real with you and let you know. (laughs) For real, right. Like, hey, at this point, if I love you and I care, like, I'm going to say something. Um, Yeah, so so that's kind of where I got the, where I was coming from with the real. Um, As far as determined, like, although I say I'm going to quit or although I, like, you know, I'll take my time. Or sometimes I just be like, you know what, I'm done for the day. Like, I haven't quit. I don't really, you know, like, most of the goals was like, okay, I'm going to go to UOP so I can graduate, so I can make this money, you know, so I can go out there and be a movie star just so I don't, I'm not poor or broke anymore. But it's like, like, yo, like, that stopped happening, and I am still haven't stopped doing what I want to do. Like, although my, basically I was embarrassed, my heart was broken, and I felt like schools really don't give a fuck about their students. Mostly true. You know, like, I, mm-hmm. I still was like, fuck, I'm still going to get this degree. <sighs> mm-hmm. so, yeah. We on the way. So, I mean, okay. and then, uh, the last one was definitely eccentric. Um, I've explored a lot of things. And also, just growing up, like, I was not into sports. And, and I'm, I was a large, chubby, chunky, fat kid. Football was supposed to be the sport I was supposed to excel at. You know, these is obviously other people's uh, opinions, but um, like, yeah, I hated sports. So theater and and TV, like that, that was something that I, I gravitated towards. And the weirdos on TV, I I um, yeah, like the weird characters, I I uh, identified with them. But I I was different because I wasn't like growing up. How just like, are you a nerd? Are you a geek? And it's like I didn't play the trading card games. Like I didn't play like Yu Gi Oh. Like don't get me wrong, I had Pokemon, but like. Yo, it's just certain weird stuff about this kid. Something about him. He real mm. different. Uh, what kind of uh, TV shows or movies did you uh, watch growing up? Or what influenced you? One more time? 
What kind of movie shows or TV shows uh, did you watch growing up that really influenced you to uh, really be engaged with theater? Um, Static Shock was one of those cool ones. Like, just his dad. <laughs> Yo, that was that was one of those things. Uh, Family Matters. Like, that's a weirdo. Uh, <laughs> mm. <laughs> and I knew that. Yeah, mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then, like, what was the play? It was like Tyler Perry's plays. Diary of a Mad Black Woman, like when I was a kid, that uh-huh. that was that was one of those things where it's like, man, like I could do this, like I could be, I could, I could be Kiki Palmer, <laughs> like I, I could be. Mm. Is a uh, yeah. Who would you say is your biggest like idol or uh, icon that you look up to has really like influenced you into really realizing your passion for theater? <laughs> I almost said Kyrants, uh, but really. For real, hey. like, for real. period. I'm so serious. Like, there's been a lot of role models and and mentors, and they don't even know who I am yet. Like, I'm gonna say Denzel Washington. I'm gonna say mm. Denzel Washington. He he helped me out because uh, he has a story similar to me. I, I I see this video and he's like, I had a 1.8 grade average. Like, basically, that's that's me. <laughs> like, uh, people people look at me and they tell me I'm destined for great things, and I just got to keep going. So. I'm gonna say as far as idols, I idolize myself, which is not necessarily a good thing. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm in a hey, can I, I wouldn't say that's a bad thing though. Mm. Okay. Because you know I'm you're in. you have the you have the that means you you have confidence in yourself. You have the ability to look yourself in the mirror and say, This is who I am, this is what I'm going to be, and I'm proud to be it, so I'm gonna look up to myself. And there's nothing wrong to that. Um, you know, the whole idea when it comes to city, it's about how do you stay in true to yourself? How do you become valuable to yourself? How do you make yourself worthy? And then in the long run, how do you implement that person of who you are into your community and then, you know, transfer that to a lot of lives and impact a lot of lives? Like you said, Denzel played a big part in your life. You see in his experience, you hear his story and you're like, wow, okay, I can resonate with his story. So I can also do it. So I would say that's hey, you look up to yourself. That's probably one of the best things you can do for yourself is not feeling like you have to find somebody else to look up to. To so I would no, say that's that's not a bad thing, man. Too. I'm gonna add to that. Like one thing, like I didn't even think about it, but um, you asked the question earlier on, like what helps you, what helps you like stay a hundred? And honestly, like hearing other people's testimonies when I'm feeling down. Like, for real, when I'm feeling down, um, the best thing that I've noticed was people like to, to pump me up was to tell me how they got through it, um, to tell me that there's mm-hmm. definitely a light at the end of the tunnel. One of my students, um, he was in a bad relationship, you know, like just a relationship he was not happy about. And for him to leave that relationship, that situation ship and for him to be in a better, healthier relationship now. Like that, that got me juiced. Like no matter what my day was hearing other people's good news, like, yo, I'm glad you are not hurting anymore. That, that helps too. So yeah, I just, I just wanted to say that I didn't even think about that, but um, hearing people's testimonials or hearing people's like triumphs definitely helps. Yeah. And it's all about, uh, you know, resonating with an experience and then saying that I can also do it myself. So, and that's the whole, that's the whole thing when it comes to city. It's uh, how do you see yourself and then how do you take that idea of yourself and you turn it into something bigger and better and then just stay consistent to it. But also don't be so selfish. You have to be a little bit selfless, too. Mm-hmm. So you have that you have those qualities. And um, for my personally, for myself, I, one thing I can actually say is, you know, the when you say about the mental fitness is. Sometimes I usually do find myself like, okay, what is, what am I supposed to do? And actually hearing other people's story and seeing somebody else's journey, it gives me that boost and says, okay, it's not the end of the world. You know, while while I'm still alive, I still have the capability to do what I can do myself because there's still opportunities out there that I haven't touched. And it's now my turn to kind of go get them. You know, it's kind of like gold mining. You always got to just, keep going and keep finding that gold piece and then until you find it you're like all right what's next you know when you go fishing you get it you you go fishing you put your fishing thing out there you're like all right today i'm trying to catch a fish 
What if you don't catch a fish that day? What you going to do? Never, never fish again? You know, you can't do that. You, you can go back the next weekend, say, I'm going to fish again today, see if I can get a fish. Um, and that might be your way of actually, you know, how you eat. So that, that determination that you have in there, Kai, is, is something that I feel like a lot of people can resonate with. Um, and it's a really good thing when it comes to actually just persevering and understanding who you are first before you start, you know, putting yourself out there for others. Um, so... Man, now, a little bit. yeah, sure. I want to talk about the determination part. Um, most of it is quiet determination or slow determination, slow burn, uh-huh. building up pressure and momentum. Um, and like, if if anyone identifies with this kind of slow burn determination, where it's like, shit, I don't know if I'm finna succeed, but I just know I can't quit. Like, please keep going. Mm-hmm. Please keep going. And know you, yes, sir. For real, because even though I ain't made it yet, I'm on my way. And if you, we all gonna make it. Wait for a nigga. Nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's a marathon, not a race. Yeah. Word. Yeah. Uh, so, next question uh, I have for you, Kai, is: Would you consider yourself a developer or a pursuer? And let me know if you meet if you want me to clarify that for you. Um, could you clarify the pursuer, please? Pursuer is when you see something and you say, I'm going to get it. Developer is where you kind of want to start things on your own and just kind of lead. Pursuer is also kind of, they they both are like on the same side of the coin, but they can also be on opposite sides of the coin. Um, So which one would you say you kind of lean more towards to you? Are you the type of person that kind of likes to create stuff and then build from there? Or are you the type of person that sees something and says, okay, I want to get invested into that. I want to put my foot into that and give my all to it. Most of what I what I do and what I am is I see something that works or I see something that may be a good idea, but I feel like I can do it in my own way. So, mm-hmm. so I feel like I'm I'm a developer. Like where I can take mm-hmm. a concept and, and build from that. Um I feel like I mm-hmm. feel like I, I, I feel like I'm definitely a developer. Um yeah, so I'm a, I'm gonna go with developer, but I'm working towards learning how to pursue more things, if that makes sense. Yeah. And can you expand more on like the type of things you're trying to pursue? For sure. So multiple streams of income is number one, like uh, not just having multiple jobs. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like for me, I'm trying to I'm trying to make a movie to where I got um, royalties for real. Like I'm trying to get residual money where it's like at this point, anytime this thing air, I get twenty five thousand. Or twenty five cents. I'm trying to get it. I want it. <laughs> uh, other things I'm trying to do. Hey. Oh, what up? what's up? What's up? No, that's not saying I'm, I'm saying a for like, oh, hey man, you no, gonna do that? Um, Let's keep it up. Things I'm trying to pursue, like, man, um, like I'm trying to pursue, like just living better. So I'm pursuing a healthier diet. I'm trying to be more plant based. Um. Like I said, like I'm exercising more, so I'm pursuing. I feel like I've been chasing mental health this whole time for the first like 20 years of life. Mm-hmm. Um, now, <clears throat> excuse me. Now that I I feel like I've achieved some sort of like mental fitness, or at least I'm more aware of my mental fitness. I think mm-hmm. it's gonna help me to be um, better equipped for my uh physical fitness yes sir. okay i uh, i actually uh can resonate with that one thing i've actually been trying to pursue is uh like i'm trying to eat more i guess a more plant-based diet because in my culture we eat a lot of a lot of meat uh like we do a lot of barbecues you know a lot of goat meat like all my life i have eaten goat at least every other week or something because honestly goat is so, so good, good. Like, i don't oh know why God. people want to hate on it <laughs> it is so good it's, especially when you know you cook it right you you know season it up put it in some stew eat it with some rice oh my god it's, that means it's that's like Ooh. one of the best meals ever oh yeah yeah but i've been trying to actually pursue a uh, uh, kind of a more balanced diet when it comes to the amount of consumption that i have when it comes to like meat products and uh plant-based products um, and it's been a challenge, not going to lie. It's been a challenge. I've been trying to like drink a smoothie every other day. 
or eat veggies with every meal that I have. I even like one of the most weird things I tried one time was uh, this might sound kind of nasty, but for me, it was it was delicious. I put some avocado and some cereal. You know, that's it that sounds totally off. What kind of milk, cereal? Cereal and oh. avocado. Uh, <laughs> I put so I used uh, so I had some Frosted Flakes. And then I put some, uh, I think it was some animal milk actually. And then I put, a, I took an avocado, sliced it up, put it on the, put it on top, and I ate it. Uh, um, and honestly, to me, that was like one of the most delicious breakfasts I ever had. But everybody around me was like, "What the hell are you eating? That's so gross." So that's kind of like the steps of just trying different ways of uh, incorporating different foods that are very uh, nutritious to to my health. So yeah, I really I agree with that part. Um, so in terms of yourself, Kai, um, how committed are you going to be into staying in true to yourself on a scale of uh, one to two? I'm gonna ride it till the motherfucking wheels fall off. Hey, okay. The wheels in the bus go round and round, round and round, round and round. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna say this, uh, it's definitely it's definitely hard. It's definitely hard because uh growing up I was a pleaser. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, thinking mm-hmm. about it, always being a performer, being an entertainer. Like I, 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 I liked making people feel good. And you know, sometimes to make people feel good, you are hurting yourself. You know? Mm. Can you expand on what you mean uh, by that? Shit, I got an example right now, sir. There's someone in my life who I feel like I can't really like talk to right now, and it's because they have their they have their life that they're dealing with. I'm like a person's friend. I feel for me to help them with their life at this point, like would be mm-hmm. me hurting myself. And it, and it hurts me. It hurts me. It hurts me to hang out with them. It hurts me to tr- like try and be there for them. And, and not to say like, don't be there for the friends that, that are hurting because obviously, but if, if it's getting to a point where you are hurting yourself and you are getting in the way of you to make yourself happy, getting in the way of you to make money, like that's not okay. They need actual help. So, so for mm-hmm. me, like, it was like, I can do anything that I want to do. Well, it's like, there's certain things you can do. Should you do those things? No. So me to look at this and, in in this tough decision, like, Hey, for me to be true to me, I have to isolate myself from this person. And I know that they're going through it right now, but I really do have faith that they will be okay. And it's not okay. like, I'm not going to be there. And know, um, like, definitely, definitely to stay true to me. I have to isolate. Okay. And yeah, what advice would you, uh, to all the young folks out there or even old folks out there that kind of need that extra motivation and morale, what advice would you give them when it comes to uh, dealing with this thing called life that we all have to endure through? Um, calculated risk. Calculated risk is a good one. Um, I'm going to say that make a decision, whatever you do. One thing about mm-hmm. like, I guess the attention deficit or ADHD, like th- th- there is not a decision being made and it's just anxiety or there's a whole bunch of different options and I'm picking every single one, but it's like, at this point, finish the job, whatever that may be. So, so I would say make calculated risks, finish the job and do it to the best of your ability. Um, extend yourself grace and love, like definitely love thyself. Explore and question the hell out of it. Whatever it mm. is. And I feel like you're going to be okay. Uh, believe in something. For real. Even if it's constantly okay. changing, uh, for you to say, like, quote unquote, I don't give a fuck, or like, you know, like, believe something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just a bit off what you just said about uh, finishing something. Um, one thing I really want to emphasize is if you start something, you better finish it. You know, you can't start a hundred meter race and run 50 meters and then just say, yeah, I'm done with the race. No, the race is done at the hundred meter race. So if you're going to start something, make sure you can't be made halfway. It can only be made all the way. So 
make sure um, for all you people out there listening, if you're going to start something, make sure you finish it and put all you can into it. Um, so for you, Kai, uh, if you had a quote for yourself and you at the end of the quote, it said, Tyrant's Mystique, what would that quote be? Um, just be you. Tyrant's Mystique. Okay. Just be you, Kai. Now, that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Thanks, brother. Well, thank you, Kai, for uh, joining in on our city podcast and uh, fostering the necessary discussion of how to value the self and the community. And for all you listeners out there, we hope you guys can take something away from this um, and keep building. And when you start something, Make sure you finish it. And don't forget, just be for sure. you. Look, I want to say so. something before you sign us out of here. Uh, I'm fucking excited. Like, I didn't even realize what you was doing here with this platform. But this is hella cool. Uh, shout out City in the motherfucking building. Um, <laughs> like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Text. Shout out to you, sir. I appreciate what you do. I appreciate that you out here living your life. You were somebody who was who, who I would say is eccentric. Or, or was was walking to the beat of his own drum, and the fact that you're still doing it, kudos and like shout out to you, sir, for real. Thank you, my big sir. Um, so, like we always say here, you know, pursue your dream, seize the day, peace. peace. Out.